All right, um, this is a follow-up video to my Raspberry Pi Looper synth thing. Um, it started getting a whole lot of views recently and a whole lot of comments as well. Not sure, I think it got featured somewhere or I don't know. But, so that's cool. A lot of people have seen it now. Um, but it also means there's been a whole lot of comments that I've been trying to keep up with, but, you know, I'm trying to answer as many as possible, but if you have, like, a specific question about the code or something, I'll, I'll do my best to answer that. Um, if you're just asking how to build it, I can't really answer that in, like, a YouTube comment. Um, this thing took about three months and a whole lot of research, so uh, hopefully just me providing the code will get you started. So, uh, one comment I get a lot of now is people want to see the insides of this thing. Um, it's been shut since I built it, and I actually didn't ever want to open it again until something broke, but uh, I figured I would, I would open it up for you guys so you can see what's inside of it. Um, and just a refresher for me as well. So anyway, got all the screws off. I will warn you, it's not pretty in there. There's a whole lot of wires. Um, there's a whole lot of hot glue and tape. Um, it's not a, it's not pretty in the inside, but anyway, um, so all the screws are off. Um, let's go ahead and carefully remove the lid here. And I'm going to unplug. You probably can't see that yet, but... So, so I'm going to go ahead and remove the lid. Try not to stretch any of these wires out too much. So... Here is what is on the bottom of it. There's the Pi, um, and the connections to the Pi are this red guy is just power. Just goes to a USB here, so I can uh, plug it in USB for power. Then there's two more USBs plugged in here. This one just is kind of a. It just brings one of the USB ports to the back, so I still have access to it uh, via USB. And then this USB guy goes to the Behringer U control, which is the sound card for this whole thing. Um, I took the casing off the U control, but I probably didn't even need to. Um, I thought that it would kind of fit better without the case. <clears throat> so sound card, and then this guy is just plugged in. This is just the uh, eighth inch out of the sound card. It goes to an eighth inch out on the back of the unit. And then some of the other connections here, we have this reset, this is the reset button. Basically it just runs a Python script, it's hooked up directly to the Pi pins here. And it runs a Py Python script that uh, kills pure data and basically reopens pure data, reopens the patch uh, with a new audio device connected. So it just cycles through one through four. And then there's also some connections for an LED on the back that just changes color depending on what what iteration you were on. Basically when I booted it up and I was connected to my girlfriend's setup, it, the Pure Data kept thinking that her audio device was the one to use instead of the internal one. So I, I put that reset button in there so I could keep cycling through until it found the correct one. That only happens when, I'm, when I boot it up while connected to two different audio devices. It just gets confused on which one to use, but uh, beyond that, there is another 8th inch out here that is connected to the NeoPixels and basically that's the lights that go around my suitcase. Um, it's just an 8th inch that carries the, the power, ground, and the data for the NeoPixels. So that is pretty much everything on the bottom and clearly that's the simple part of it. Um, and then we're going to bring over this guy. So <clears throat> here's all of the user interface stuff, and it is all controlled by this, which is a Teensy 3.6. There's a whole lot of connections on it. Um, I also am using a multiplexer, and that's just because I ran out of analog pins on the 3.6. But so what do we got here? The easy stuff, here are all the sliders, and then a whole lot of knobs. Those are all just connected. Uh, I think a lot of them go through the multiplexer into the Teensy there. Then we have the buttons. 
So these guys and these guys, and these are the SparkFun PCBs. Um, but I actually drilled holes through them where the uh, the regular LED would mount in there because I wanted to use these NeoPixels, and that's what these little guys are. Um, I just the NeoPixels are really nice. They only take one data pin off of the the Teensy, and you can just chain them all together. So I have um, 16 and 8, and then there's also these continue on to the output on the back, which go to a whole NeoPixel strip that goes around my suitcase. But, yeah. So button pads, button pads, NeoPixels. There's just some regular push buttons here, 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 and here. Um, there's also, here's the, uh, the encoder. Um, and then here's the the screen which has all the, the UI stuff on there um, let's see what else right here is the um, Nintendo DS touch screen and it kind of has like this I put a piece of paper on the back of it and then the NeoPixels are kind of contained in this little box that makes uh, it diffuses the light but yeah what else is there I mean that's pretty much it that's all the connections I can think of buttons, knobs, sliders, um, these button pad PCBs. But yeah, you can find tutorials on how to use this guy from SparkFun, this button pad, and how to code all that. And uh, basic tutorials on just like analog reads and stuff for Arduino. And then the screen has its own library from TNC that I'm using. Um, yeah, so basically this is all of this just plugs in USB to the Pi, and it uh, sends all of its stuff over serial into the Pi, into Pure Data. Pure Data receives that, and also Pure Data sends things serial to the Teensy, so I can display different things on the screen. Um, yeah, all of this stuff could be essentially detached. Uh, the code could be edited a little bit, so it's just straight up a, a MIDI controller. Um, the reason I didn't go MIDI with all this stuff is because of some of the messages I needed to send back and forth and also because I'm connecting it again to my girlfriend's setup and it was getting confused on which MIDI device to use, either the Teensy here or the external one that my girlfriend has, which is like an audio MIDI interface, but yeah, that's really all I can think of. I, um, I think I'm going to try to keep this thing shut for now. I just wanted to do this quick video to give you guys a look at what all is contained within it. Again, it's it's not a, it's not pretty. There's a lot of wires. <clears throat> I probably could have done this a million better ways as far as like the wiring and stuff, but this is the way I do things. Um, I don't know. It works. All the connections are solid. It's working. Um, it has gone through some live shows already, a couple, and yeah, you'll notice some of the knobs are different right now. I'm, I'm actually creating new knobs for this thing uh, with some urethane that I'm casting myself. <coughs> but yeah, that is a look at the inside. Hopefully that answers some questions about it. Again, um, <clears throat> I'll try to get to as many comments as I can, but the code is provided. Look through the comments, see if there's already a question that has been answered, and uh, check out the code on GitHub. It's all there. Um, yeah, I hope you guys, hope that helped a little bit. So, thanks.